Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV Pixel. Let's go shopping at Mysidia. We've got a lot of stuff that I want to buy here today, especially in this version of the game. So now we can finally get an upgrade to the Ice Rod, the Flame Rod. And unlike the Ice Rod, this one actually boosts your intellect a little bit. So I definitely want to get one of those. I also want to get another crossbow to go with the other holy arrow that we've got there as well but if you're playing the super nintendo version i would get the healing staff or cure staff you can use it as an item in battle to heal up your party members quite a bit there but in this version since the accuracy is much greatly boosted in this version i prefer going with the holy arrows though even in the super nintendo version that's not a horrible idea especially for porn who has nothing better to do so for her, I definitely want to give her a Holy Arrow and Crossbow to start there. And then with the Flame Rod, we want to give that to Palum there. One thing about Intellect, or Magic in general, really. Uh, let's see. As far as how it affects your damage, for every four Intellect you have, you get another multiplier on your Magic damage. So that's pretty nice. So yeah, it went from 15 to 18. We got another one that will really help out, especially at this point in the game. Let's see, those are the only weapons I want to buy. I want to buy a lot of armor here, though. Oh, okay. Well, how would you know if a paladin can use it? I mean, you've never had one ever, as far as I know. Well, in any case, we've got a lot of stuff that we want to buy here. I want to buy not two, but three wizard hats for later. And yeah, they boost your intellect and spirit a bit there. So that's pretty nice. See, we've also got the Gaia gear. It does not boost your magic stats, but it does make you immune to gradual petrification. And we're going to be seeing that later on eventually. So those are going to be pretty nice for us. And then silver armlets. Yeah, they don't really do much against or for your stats, but they do make you resistant to ghoul attacks. Not that any of them are going to be using physical attacks on us anytime soon. So yeah, that's kind of pointless there. But in any case, we got a whole bunch of new stuff. Uh, let's see. I do want to buy some of the other equipment there as well. But uh, let me equip everything I want on the mages there. Why they don't have all this equipment to start, like the 3D versions, I don't know. It is their own village, but maybe tuition doesn't cover that for them. I mean, they are mages in training. Oh, yeah. And one thing to notice about Palum the flame rod is on his left hand because he's left-handed, unlike Porum, who is right-handed there. So when you're equipping stuff on Porum, you want to keep that in mind. Okay, and then, yeah, why don't we go with the silver armlet? And, hmm. No, I think I'm going to stick with the guy gear, but I was thinking about, wait a minute, you know, the silence immunity from the bard's tunic might be useful here. But we can avoid that problem entirely, so I'm not going to do anything with that. But, uh, okay, yeah, so we got all that stuff. Let's sell all of, well, not all of my excess equipment, but most of my excess equipment. I want to hold on to the Fire Claw. Let's see, we can get rid of the regular bow, but hold on to the second crossbow and holy arrows for later. Let's see, the staff. Yeah, that might be useful, actually. I wasn't planning on it. Uh, you could also use it to cast Poissana to... Cure the poison status, which will be useful in the next major boss fight. Let's see, Ice Rods, we can get rid of both of them. They are useless now. We will never, ever be able to use Harps ever again in the game. So don't worry about that. Let's see, basically sell anything that doesn't have a special property to it. So like Ruby Ring, I want to hold on to. I don't plan on using Ruby Rings. Or not Ruby, the Bard's Tunic. But I might hold on to it for some special situations later. Let's see. So we want to get rid of all of the feathered caps. Yeah, they were automatically removed from my party members when they were all shipwrecked. So that's pretty nice. I mean, the shipwreck wasn't, but getting the equipment is. Okay, so let's see. You definitely want to hold on to another silver armlet and wizard's hat for later. 
And then, with all that extra money that we've got, let's see what I can buy. Let's get a Light Shield, Light Helm, and Gauntlets for later. Spoiler alert! We're going to become a Paladin and can use this stuff. So, yeah, it does seem kind of strange that they spoil future events by selling you equipment that you know only Paladins can use. I mean, whatever. Let's see, I also want to buy some items. One of the very few instances in the game where I buy stuff from the item shop. So let me see what we got. Okay, I want to buy four high potions. Three or four should suffice for our needs. Not so much for restoring HP, but, well, you'll see when we get there later on. Oh yeah, this is also the first town I think that sells high potions, as well as cottages. Although, tents will suffice for my needs for now, but sooner than later, the their HP, or MP, will exceed 100, and a tent only restores 100 MP. But for now, this will do. Okay, so we got all our equipment needs ready to go. And let's see, I would like to rearrange my spells a little bit to be more like the Super Nintendo version of the game. Yeah, they... I don't know why it's changed like this. But I would like these to be right where they are. Oh, actually, hold on. More like that. Okay, so your spells are good there. Then your black magic spells. Let me see what I've got for you. Okay, let's go. No, I'm going to arrange this. Yeah, like this. Okay. Then, yeah, go fire, ice, lightning. And switch those around. I don't ever use the poison spell, but it does cause non-elemental damage, which might be useful at this point. But, uh, okay, yeah, let's save so I don't have to do that all over again. And start heading east to Mount Ordeals. Oh, yeah. I can move diagonally. Well, here we got a new enemy. Zoo! And if you use a Deathbringer on the guy, that might cause instant death, but apparently not today. So, yeah, in the Super Nintendo version, the Deathbringer was practically guaranteed to cause instant death on the zoo. But apparently not in this version. I mean, it does do it. It's just not, like, perfectly accurate as it used to be. But, yeah, let's heal everyone up there and continue onward. You can also encounter cockatrices here. So if you haven't gotten the summon yet, this would be another place where you can do that. But otherwise, let's just keep going with what I've got. And you know what? Let's use our twin cast command from the twins there. The way it works is both of the twins will go into the twin status, and then you have a 25% chance of casting Comet, or a 75% chance of casting Pyro. Comet costs 20 HP to, or MP to both twins, while Pyro only costs 10 MP. Comet is a bit stronger on all enemies because it doesn't the damage doesn't get split among all the targets whereas pyro does so against one enemy pyro probably would have been better but with multiple enemies comet is but you don't really have much of a choice in the matter oh well let's see against these guys i'm gonna use darkness to bypass their counterattacks. But if you're playing the North American Super Nintendo version, you don't have that command available. So I would use Twin Cast to deal with them because both of those spells are non-elemental. And you'll avoid their counterattacks. But all oh right, we got some new spells going here. Nothing extraordinarily interesting, but it will do. Okay, so yeah, there's the mountain. Let's go down here to the Chocobo's Forest to pick up the location for the achievement there. And then, yeah, I also want to restore everyone up to full. And this will mark the end of the usefulness 
of Cecil's Darkness command. Let's see, Porum also has the Cry command. I have no idea what that does in this version of the game. It says it flusters enemies, but it doesn't seem to change anything. They change what it does in like every version of the game and it's almost never good. So I wouldn't worry about that. Pylum has the Bluff command, which increases his intellect stat by 16. So that's pretty nice. I would only use that during boss fights, really, but it could be useful every now and then. In any case, all right, yeah, let's get our MP restored with the White Chocobo. Kind of reminds me of the White Antler from Breath of Fire 1 to restore AP or their equivalent of MP. But uh, okay, so we got everything there. Let's see what's inside. So yeah, most of the enemies here are going to be uh, undead enemies. So Cecil's Darkness Command is not going to be so useful. Whoa! No one said the mountain was on fire. But I guess it's just a visible plot wall. So you have to go to Mysidia, get Palum to come over here, and put out the fire. Well, that was easy. <laughs> okay, come on. Pour him. Do the thing. Do the thing! <laughs> she did the thing! The sound effect is always slightly different whenever she whacks him upside the head. But it, it's pure gold in every version of the game. Just a little different, but... <laughs> His antics? What about your antics? What are you going to do if I trip in front of one of your villagers? Wake me upside the head? Set me on fire? Uh-oh. Yeah, new to uh, Final Fantasy IV. Well, in the series, we have... Yeah, some extra cutscenes for the bad guys automatically that are not in our immediate presence. So yeah, that's one thing I love about Final Fantasy IV. Tons of villain presence. They, n well, not never, but they almost never go away. So who's this guy? Scarmiglion? Scarmiglion? I don't know how you pronounce it. Oh, well, thank you for not finishing me off at the time when you could have. How do you guys even know about that? Well, I probably know, but it would be a spoiler. Oh. Um, well, yeah, that is true. In addition to being the Darkness Command being useless against Undead, it also is Dark Elemental for his regular attacks. So, yeah, Cecil is not going to be so extraordinary in this dungeon. But if you got some Bomb Fragments, he could try using those. Though, I'd probably rather save them for flan-type enemies than using them here. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, after both of you, let me live. Thank you for spelling judgment correctly. Absolutely. Oh, or that. Well, I don't think Rosa will, would like that very much. Well, you killed, nearly killed me before. Oh, what blunder. You guys got everything you wanted. Thank you for not bombing us into the Stone Age after you were done getting what you want, like Dampsian. But, uh, okay, so we're back in control here. Oh yeah, by the way, with the twin cast command, that also functions a little differently from one version to the next. In the Super Nintendo versions, the intellect stat that is used for determining the damage from twin cast is based on whoever is in the higher slot of your party, but it's the middle slot that's number one. It goes, uh, what is it? One, two, let me get to the order here. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, regardless of whether it's front row or back row. So you'll want Palum to be in the middle slot 
to help out with that. But in newer versions of the game, I know in the GBA version, it's based on whichever of the twins has more agility, which tends to favor Pom, and then they use her intellect stat, which isn't quite as good. Though, while we're here, the twin cast ability is not going to be that extraordinarily anyway. So, let's continue onward. But alright, let's see. With these guys, yeah, these are one of the few enemies that Cecil can still be pretty effective against. So, I'm going to have Porum attack with her holy arrows to take out the big guy. And then hopefully, we'll be able to take out most of the skeletons. Well, we'll get there. But... Yeah, well, the accuracy still isn't perfect there. If you use the Flame Rod as an item, you can cast Fire for free. It's not as powerful as manually casting it, but it's still pretty good. What's even better is the Fire Spell. And that'll be really good against large groups of undead around here. Though I wouldn't use it against skeletons. They don't have that much HP. But yeah, if you didn't get the Blood Bones back at Mount Hobbs, you can... Find them here for your bestiary needs. Also, I want to equip Palum with the Holy Arrow and Crossbow now because they'll be pretty useful to help conserve his MP a bit there. Although I do have a whole bunch of ethers, but I might need them later. You never know. Well, in any case, okay, with this fight, we got the spirit enemies that are that absorb uh, fire elemental damage. So I want to get them out of the way with the darkness command and then follow up with fire. Probably should have had Porum take out the blood bones first, but, well, either way, it worked out. Hooray! Now, if you're playing the North American Super Nintendo version... Uh, and you don't have darkness, I would use either the holy arrows to defeat the spirits there, or you could use twin cast, because it's non-elemental. I mean, uh, what is it? Pyro, you might think it's fire elemental by the name, but it's not. So, anything you can do with twin cast is non-elemental, so I wouldn't worry about it. Well, we're getting there. Well, let's see what we got going on up here. Hey, Tella! What are you doing here? How did you get here? I don't know. Maybe he melted the ice on Mount Hobbs, got through, and then set it back up so we wouldn't follow him. What do you... What, Meteor? There something that I should know about that? Oh, yeah. I guess you guys wouldn't have known. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, they wanted me to babysit them and all that. <laughs> I never get tired of that. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, really? Oh, at the bottom of Poseidon, or not Poseidon, uh, Leviathan's stomach, probably. Probably. I mean, we didn't find a corpse or anything. Well, yeah. Or at least she's very important to me. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you forgot a lot of spells, huh? Oh, really? Shouldn't Tella know about this place already? I would think so. Well, most mages don't have a lot of vitality in this game. Well, yeah, that's probably true, Tella. Ha ha. Yeah, you're just a kid. Oh, I had no choice. 
Oh, okay. Not sure what that dark sword has to do with Golbez, but okay. The bad guy? Ah. Yeah, another version, or one version of the game, that he says he's the source of all evil. He is the evil one. Something. Hey, hey, all right. The more the merrier. More party members with Tella. But can Cecil successfully become a paladin? Find out next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy IV Pixel. This is Ichi Bailey signing off. Have a good day!